again, and welcome back to The Secret Life of Salmon. In this episode, we'll talk about where baby salmon come from, why we hardly ever see them, and how salmon start their complex, incredible lives. Against all odds, wild salmon travel thousands of miles, navigate through dangerous obstacles from their birthplace, through the ocean, and back to the stream where they were born to spawn. An almost unbelievable journey. Scientists aren't sure why they do this. Another secret in the lives of salmon. One of the most remarkable things about salmon they lay their eggs near the same spot where they were born. How do they find their way back? I'll tell you more about how they do this a little later. The life cycle of a wild salmon begins in the cold, clear, oxygen-rich stream water, a vital condition for salmon to survive. Fast-moving streams are the best habitat for salmon because the speed of the flowing water and shadows from overhanging vegetation help to keep it cold. Colder, fast-moving water also contains more oxygen for the fish to breathe. The female salmon is referred to as the hen and the male a buck. Before she lays her eggs, the hen salmon makes a shallow depression on the stream bed called a red. She whips her tail back and forth cleaning the rocks, mud, and debris from the bottom of the stream, making something similar to a nest, about the size of you. Once she's made her red, the hen lays her eggs. These eggs are different from birds' eggs, which have hard shells. Salmon eggs are soft and transparent. As the hen lays her eggs, a buck swims alongside her and covers them with a cloudy white substance called milt, which fertilizes them. He has to do this within 10 to 15 seconds or they won't become babies. After the eggs are fertilized, the hen covers them with gravel to protect them from predators and to keep them from being washed away. Depending on the species, each hen salmon can lay between 2,000 and 8,000 eggs. That may seem like a lot, but this high number is important because only one in 10 eggs survives to become a baby salmon. Spawning marks the end of life for the adult salmon. Both the hen and the buck will die within a week or so after laying and fertilizing the eggs. Why do salmon die after they spawn? Most salmon stop eating when they return to freshwater and begin the challenging journey back to their natal or home stream. Once they get there, they use even more energy to dig their red than produce and fertilize their eggs. Why does it work this way? Nobody knows. Isn't that interesting? Okay, back to our story. Inside each egg is an embryo, the beginnings of a very small fish. The embryo survives by feeding on a yolk sac that's also inside the egg. This yolk sac is the same as the yolk of a chicken's egg that we eat for breakfast. The salmon embryo's yolk sac is kind of like a built-in lunchbox. This tiny sac is loaded with fat and essential nutrients, everything the embryo needs to grow and survive. Despite the protection of the red and the nutrient-rich food inside the yolk sacs, salmon eggs are fragile and can be harmed or killed by lots of different things. Embryos can easily die if the water is too warm or if it becomes clogged with dirt from landslides or human activity upstream like logging and farming. Too much dirt in the water can cover the eggs and smother the embryos inside. If the gravel covering the red is removed, the eggs can become tasty snacks for predators like birds and other fish, or be swept away downstream. Let me show you why the hen salmon lays all those eggs. I'm holding about 100 eggs in my hands. Only about 10 of the fish that emerge from these eggs will make it to the ocean. Even more amazing, only one fish created from these 100 eggs will live to return home to their natal stream. The odds of hatchery fish returning to their home waters can be even lower. As you recall, fish hatcheries are where people raise baby salmon until they're big enough to release into the wild. Hatcheries were built to restore damaged river environments when wild salmon started to disappear from damage to their habitat. 
As both wild and hatchery embryos grow in their eggs, they need even more oxygen, which causes the tiny fish to wiggle and nibble at the egg soft shell until they break through. Now they are called alvin. Alvin still have yolk sacs attached to their bellies, giving them food for a few months of life. Even after leaving their eggs, wild alvin stay in the red to keep safe and hide from predators. And hatchery alvin are kept in holding pens until they are mature enough to be released into rivers as smolts. So now we see something that looks more like a fish, the tiny alvin. The wild alvin have survived the dangers of the stream to live another day, and hatchery alvin are waiting for their time to be released out to the ocean. What if I told you these little fellas who started as tiny, delicate embryos turn into giant, hungry hunters? Join us for episode three to discover how and the secret life of salmon.